Our sun remains a bit on the quiet side with a glancing solar storm blow and some fast solar wind. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun keeps things on the quiet side this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a lot of active regions and a lot of snake-like filaments all over the disk, which we're watching quite carefully, but none of them have erupted yet. Now, the sun is giving us a lot of solar storms, but none of them have been directed towards Earth. So we're seeing a lot of interesting stuff on the sun's far side. But we do have back on the 7th, near region 3425, Bam, right there it fires an M2 class flare and launches a solar storm that looks like it's mainly going to the east of Earth, although we could get a little bit of something along with the fast solar wind that we're gonna be seeing from several of these finger-like coronal holes. We have one in the north, one in the south, and then one in the equatorial region. That's gonna be giving us some pockets of fast solar wind over the next, oh, possibly week or so, and that could give us a little bit of aurora, maybe down at high latitudes, probably not mid-latitudes, the wind isn't going to last long enough. However, we do have more regions on the, sun, the east limb of the sun that look like they're also solar storm producers, and we definitely have a couple regions on the sun's far side that look like they could be big storm players once they rotate back into Earth view, which could be in about a week from now. Switching to our M-flare and dayside radio blackout threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux over this past week, we've been hovering right about the seafloor, and by proxy, that means that the solar flux continues to be high. Amateur radio operators, you should be enjoying some decent radio propagation on Earth's dayside. Now, granted, we've had a few M-class flares here and there. They've been low-level flares at about an R1-level radio blackout, but they've been few and far between, and most of the flares have been sitting around C-class. So this means the noise on the band should be a bit quieter than what you've been having over the past few weeks uh, when we had some bigger flares going on. But still, the radio blackout threat is still uh, in the moderate range, so you could still get a single pop here and there, but most likely conditions will continue this way over the next week until we see some bigger flare players that are on the sun's far side. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we've been pretty quiet over this past week or so. In fact, the last time we actually reached storm levels was clear back on the 2nd and the 3rd, and this was due to a couple fast solar storms that hit us. However, the magnetic field really wasn't all that strong in those storms, so sadly we didn't last at storm levels for very long before things quieted down. Nonetheless, it was good enough to give us a bit of aurora clear down to mid-latitudes for a short while. Meanwhile, things since then have calmed down quite a bit. We have had a couple mini solar storms hit us, and that's what gave us, bumped us up to active conditions a couple times, but didn't last very long at all. And then we've just been hovering between unsettled and quiet conditions since then. However, we do have the pockets of fast solar wind that are going to hit us, and that could easily bump us back up to active conditions. So aurora photographers, especially if at high latitudes, you will get a chance uh, again here over the next few days. But if you're at mid-latitudes, most likely the story is going to remain pretty much as it, as it is now. And although the aurora chances as of late have been a little bit on the slim side, nonetheless, we've managed to have some gorgeous aurora clear down deep into mid-latitudes, even from some of these weaker solar storms. So let me share a little bit with you, like this gorgeous shot from Ontario. And we've had gorgeous aurora in Quebec. An aurora was seen in Manitoba. This is all during that solar storm back on the 2nd and 3rd. And we had gorgeous aurora in Alberta. An aurora was even seen in British Columbia. And as we dip down into the United States, aurora was seen in Maine. And it was also seen in Michigan. We had aurora in Wisconsin. 
and it was seen in Washington State. We also had aurora, believe it or not, in Illinois, and it was seen as far south as Missouri, and possibly even Kansas. And as we dip down under into the aurora australis, aurora was seen all over New Zealand. And it even made it as far north as Perth, Australia. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, we can no longer rely on stereo to give us the far-sighted images of the sun, so we need to rely on HMI and AIA images of the sun about two weeks ago, along with the JSOC HMI helioseismology far-side viewer to get an idea of what regions that once were on the Earth-facing disk of the sun are now on the far side and surviving their far side passage. And as we take a look at that disk, we can see regions 3405 and 30. 3411, these regions are about to rotate back into Earth view. In fact, when we look at the helioseismology far-sighted viewer, you can actually see the dark regions. There's definitely some growth there. So these regions could be contributing to some of the solar storms we've been seeing fired on the sun's far side. Now, the other region we're watching is region 3413. This region actually is rotating about center disk right now. So that means it's going to be about another five or six days before it rotates into Earth view. But from the far side uh, helioseismology viewer, you can see that region is definitely growing as well on the sun's far side. So this could also be one of the big contenders that we got to watch for. So in about a couple days, we've got one set that's moving into view, and then we've got about a week to wait for region 3413, but it looks like we could have some more fireworks in store. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon, with the new moon being on the 15th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, now is your perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating some fast solar wind from that set of coronal holes that are going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. Plus, we do have a little bit of enhancement from that solar storm that's going to the east of Earth, but could give us a, like a glancing blow. So that could actually happen ahead of that fast solar wind. So at high latitudes, we could be getting a little bit of a show here. NOAA's expecting uh, minor storm conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm. And this will be over the 12th and the 13th before things begin to calm down. But like I said, we might get a little bit of something ahead of that. Now at mid latitudes, it's not quite as rosy a story. We are only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10% chance of a minor storm, and we could get active conditions on the 13th, according to NOAA. We'll definitely have to see if these pockets of fast wind will be fast enough to really bump the levels up there. So only if you're a dedicated aurora chaser should you chase if you're down at mid-latitudes. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, including a few that are big flare players that we're watching, mainly regions 3425, 3423, and 3421, but a couple others we're paying attention to as well. But all of that activity is keeping that solar flux in the mid-150s right now, and that's the way things are going to continue easily over this next week. NOAA's giving us uh, about a 40% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout, and about a 5% chance of X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout. So this means we have moderate noise on the bands right now, and that's going to be for the dayside radio bands. Nightside, it gets to be nice and quiet. You don't have to worry about these radio blackouts. But this condition is easily going to last until region 3423 rotates to the sun's far side, which will be in about a week. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range for you aviators, and this is fl at flight level 360. And for everyone else, we're at the quiet S0 range. And likely these conditions are going to continue over the rest of this week. NOAA's only giving us about a 5% chance of a radiation storm over the next few days. Now that risk may rise as we move to the end of this week, as region 3423 begins to rotate to the west limb, but for the most part, all you frequent flyers and high-risk passengers, it looks like you're in the clear, and you pilots, it looks like you get a bit of a reprieve. 
So the space weather this week is remaining a bit on the calm side. We do have some coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth strike zone and sending us some fast solar wind. So Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a show, especially around the 12th and the 13th. But if you're a Aurora photographer at mid latitudes, well, the shows may be a bit more sporadic. So only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators, well, you guys are going to be enjoying the nice radio propagation because on the day side because the solar flux remains high but we're not having to deal with too many uh, big solar flares and radio blackouts and this condition is easily going to continue over this next week so enjoy and now GPS users well you know what we're not getting any big solar storms on the night side with a ton of aurora and we're not getting you know, some big radio blackouts on the day side so GPS reception as long as you stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from any aurora at high latitudes, your GPS reception should be pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.